Ave Maria, welcome to Marian Shrines of the World. Today's shrine is the Basilica of St. Mary of the Angels of the Portuncula, the birthplace of the Franciscan Order. As St. Francis knelt in the small broken down chapel of St. Damien's, he felt Christ speak to him from the crucifix, saying, Rebuild my church, which is falling into ruins. It was only later that he realised that the heart of Christ's message to him was to spiritually rebuild and strengthen Christ's church. But in the meantime, Francis took this command literally and began to rebuild various churches. First he built St. Damien's Chapel itself, then St. Peter's Chapel and then St. Mary of the Angels, otherwise known as the Portuncula. The Portuncula meaning small portion, refers to the land in Assisi that belonged to the Benedictines. On this land was a small ancient church dedicated to the Virgin Mother of God. The great Saint Francis had great devotion to the Queen and of the Queen of the World, and when he saw that the church was deserted, he began to live there constantly and repair it. He heard that the angels often visited it so that it was called St. Mary of the Angels. Here, therefore, he resolved to remain because of his reverence to the angels, and, above all, because of the exceeding love which he bore to the Mother of God. The Benedictines wanted to give Francis the church, but in order to remain faithful to his life of poverty, Francis rented it from them with the annual compensation of a basket of fish from the local Teskico River adjoining the humble sanctuary of Portuncula, the first Franciscan convent was formed by the erection of a few small huts or cells of straw and mud and enclosed by a hedge. This settlement was the beginning of the Franciscan order. The Portuncula was also where St. Francis received the vows of St. Clair. One night, St. Francis, feeling the temptation to abandon his way of life, rolled in some bramble thorns in an attempt to overcome doubt and temptation. In contact with his body, the bramble bushes turned into dog roses without thorns. During this same night of August the 2nd, the saint received the portuncula indulgence. There is a representation of the reception of this indulgence on the façade of the portuncula chapel. While Francis was praying at the portuncula, Christ appeared to him and offered him whatever favour he might want. The salvation of souls was ever in St. Francis' prayers, and wishing to make his beloved Portuncula a sanctuary where many might be saved, he begged a plenary indulgence for all who, having confessed their sins, should visit the little chapel and also receive Holy Communion. Our Lord acceded to this request on condition that the Pope should ratify the indulgence. St. Francis thereupon set out for Perugia and one of his brothers to speak with Pope Honorius III. The latter, notwithstanding some opposition from the Curia at such an unheard of favour, granted the indulgence, restricting it, however, to one day yearly. He subsequently fixed August the 2nd as the day for the gaining of this indulgence, commonly known as the Pardon of Assisi. Today the indulgence extends to any Catholic church visited on this day with this intention. St. Francis died here on October the 3rd, 1226, and on his deathbed he recommended the chapel to the faithful protection and care of his brothers. Shortly after 1290, the chapel, which measured only about 22 feet by 13 and a half, was greatly enlarged in order to accommodate the many pilgrims that came to visit there. Later, the buildings around the shrine were taken down by order of Pope Pius V, except a cell in which St. Francis had died, and where, enclosed by a large basilica known as the Basilica of St. Mary of the Angels. Construction started on the 25th of March, 1569, and was completed in 1679. In 1684, a bell tower was added. 
It was originally intended to have a twin tower, but the second was never built. The Majestic Basilica is a large building, the seventh largest Christian church in the world. On the 11th of April 1909, the church was raised by Pope Pius X to the status of Patriarchal Basilica and Papal Chapel. In an inner garden area assessed by going through the sacristy, one can see the last remains of the ancient wood in which St Francis and his friars lived. Here he talked to the turtle doves, inviting them to praise the Lord. In fact, doves have been nesting since time and memorial in the hands of the statue of St Francis in this rose garden. It was here that he rolled in the bramble thorns. A new crypt was constructed behind the altar between 1965 and 1970. During the excavation, foundations of the original little huts surrounded the portuncula were exposed. This place was loved by St. Francis above all places in the world, for here, in great humility, he began his spiritual life. Here he grew in virtue. Here he attained his happy and perfect end, and this, at the hour of his death, he commended to his friars as a spot most dear to the Blessed Virgin. The shrine of the Portuncla not only is it of great importance to the Franciscans, but is also worthy of admiration by the Catholic faithful the world over. Ave Maria. <laughs>